A reading from the book of Judith. Blessed are you, daughter by the Most High, above all women on earth. And blessed be the Lord God, the creator of heaven and earth. Your deed of hope will never be forgotten by those who tell of the might of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sometimes you can see a whole lot of things just by looking. Believe it or not, that little aphorism is from another famous baseball player, Yogi Berra. Sometimes you can see a whole lot of things just by looking. It's a clever expression, of course, but sadly, perhaps mostly, the opposite is truer, believe it or not. Mostly, we do a whole lot of looking without really seeing much. Seeing implies more than having good eyesight. Our eyes, they can be wide open and we can still see very little. I've always been intrigued by how scripture describes Paul immediately after his conversion. Now, we always assume that it tells us that Paul was struck blind by his vision, but I think the text implies more. It tells us that Paul got up off the ground with his eyes wide open, seeing nothing. That doesn't necessarily equate with physical blindness. He may well have been seeing physically, but he wasn't seeing the meaning of what was getting him, himself into. Someone had to come and open his eyes, not just so that he could see again physically, but especially that he could see more deeply into the mystery of Christ. Seeing, truly seeing, implies more than having eyes that are physically healthy and open. We see the outer surface of things, but more importantly, we see beneath, and that isn't automatically seen. We see, for instance, in what's contained inside the healing miracles of Jesus. In the Gospels, we see Jesus perform a number of healings. He heals lame people, deaf people, mute people, people with leprosy, and two women who, for different reasons, are unable to become pregnant. But what's important for us to be able to see in these various miracles is that almost always, there's much more at issue than a mere physical healing. Jesus is healing people in a deeper way. That is, he's healing the lame so that they can walk in freedom and in service of God. He's healing the deaf so that they can hear the good news. He's healing the mute so that they can open their mouths in praise. And he's healing those who are hemorrhaging interiorly so that they can bring new life to birth. We see this most clearly at times when Jesus heals people who are blind. He's giving them more than just physical sight. He's opening their eyes so that they can see more deeply. I'm telling you all of this because it draws me to recognize that when I see and gaze at the icon of our mother perpetual help and I quietly contemplate her face, I begin to feel myself slowly being drawn into the presence of God by her eyes, which always invite me to see what she sees. And here are some things that she invites me to see. First, she invites us to see with eyes of wonder and awe. The great writer G.K. Chesterton once affirmed that when we're familiar with something, when something is taken for granted, it's the greatest of all illusions. And that the secret of life is to learn to look at those things that we're so familiar with until, ironically, they become unfamiliar again. 
In other words, we open our eyes to the depth when we open ourselves to wonder, to being able to see something so ordinary in a whole new way. Secondly, she invites us to move beyond our bitterness and to see through eyes softened by grief. The root of all bitterness is wounds. And the way out of that bitterness is to grieve. Tears clear our eyesight because they soften a heart hardened by wounds. Thirdly, she invites us to change our perspective from seeing through anger to seeing instead through forgiveness. Now, you have to agree with me, nothing taints our eyesight as much as anger. It is the most debilitating of all cataracts. And nothing cleanses our vision as much as forgiveness. Nobody holding a grudge sees straight. And finally, she always invites us to see with eyes of gratitude. Longing and hunger distort our vision. Gratitude restores it. It enables insight. The most grateful person you know has the best eyesight of all the people you know. Love is in the eye.